Welcome to Indie Resources How to Make a Browser Based RTS Video 2. This is Hall of Valhalla. Um, I kind of went a little hog wild on getting everything set up on the second video because I was going to do it kind of real time, but there's just a lot that's going to go into the initial setup. So I went ahead and created everything and I'm just going to walk everybody through what I did because getting this started was probably the worst part. Um, it's really not that hard, but it, it, it would just been took way too long to just do it and then show everybody so and plus I made a million mistakes and had to figure a couple things of how to do it so I'll just walk through and show it it's really not that bad just to show you what we got um, and and for and just as you're watching this video remember right now I just want to get a basic setup I just want to get a simple is this gonna work how's it gonna work and then we'll come back and make and add features and add it and if you notice my graphics suck so if anybody wants wants to come in and put some cool graphics and stuff that Donate them. I'll be more than happy to use them, but for now I'm just using what I got. And like I said, this isn't going to be a, a production AAA game or anything. We're just we're just building the game, and you guys can go from there. And remember, the features that I'm adding now is just the start. We're just basing it off that, and we're going to build up. So we are going to make things more dynamic than this, but for now, let's get a start. So for now, we have our basic house and a tower we can build supposedly and no unit selected. And of course, this is going to look better. But so if we pick the house, you say it shows. A selected unit here. If we pick the tower, it shows that. So let's say we want to build the house. I've got it to where now we can click and the little building thing starts. And right now I've got it to where it's just one thing. I'm working on making sure the limits, you know, it doesn't build outside the limits. But here I got a little, I got a little goofy thing going on. So I'm going to fix that. But um, and basically it's because I'm using a on click method for the div. And this this since it's actually placing it. At zero zero of your click, the mouse click, it's placing the image out here. So that's all we got to do is fix. And we'll, we'll get it fixed. But for now, we've this is a, this is a pretty good start because this is a big part of it. Is where do you want to start? And of course, we're gonna have like a command center or whatever else. But the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a timer that this thing slowly builds. And we might put little people on there and sound. But for now, it's a pretty good start. Um, so let's look at how we got this far. Um, Start with our index.php. I've included a connect connection to the database, and you'll see connect.php. Uh, I've actually created a connection, but for now there's nothing in there. No, we're not using any database stuff, but of course later on we're going to, going to want to have database connection. Uh, but for now it's nothing, but I want it to go ahead and be in there so we're ready for it. Of course the style sheet we set up, I did have to add the mouse game library. And I created, and I'll show you here in a minute, I create a main functions JavaScript that I'm attached to. And so it pulls it, and that's where we're going to have all of our functions in. And then right here, we actually have some JavaScript we're going to run. <clears throat> this building selected I needed is a global variable. I know people are going to throw up when I say global variable, but I'm using it as a global variable because that's I need it to be able to stretch across many functions, and to me, that's the easiest way. Right now, it's set to zero. Nothing's been selected. And all that's doing is, is when we select this unit, it goes from zero to one, and what I, probably what I should do is when that gets when you click that, that goes back to zero, so you can't click again. And we might do that at the end of this, if I remember. The next thing I want to do, if if you notice, I have everything centered here. I built everything to where it centers on the page, no matter where you're at. Well, somehow we have to know where things are at comp uh, relative to the page. So what you can do is, because like here might be. Um, a different X and Y than somebody with a different screen size than me. So in other words, the screen size will change as soon as you hit refresh. Now it's not doing it here because I haven't did anything, but the, the screen size X and Y will change along with the window or depending on what computer you're on. So what we're doing is I'm doing an offset of the element of map area. The center is a, the center is a map area. And to show you what I've done, I've created a style sheet and I've got a wrapper that wraps completely around the entire page and what the wrapper does is it centers everything that's inside the wrapper so everything in here that's inside that wrapper will always be center because it's being because of it's inside this wrapper and all I did was make the margin left and right auto and um, and you know just change some fonts and that way it's kinda like using a body tag almost um, the logo I just used the simple logo put a set and a height and a width and then the map area is the center map area and I just made it repeat that which we're going to change that too later um, set the width and height and then I got my two panel areas and if you see when you look two panel areas the map area and the logo that's all we got so far so when you look at this um, index what it's doing is, is it's taking the offset of the map 
of this map and you're getting that that X basically the X and the Y um, and that way wherever this is at we have a basis so if this thing if, if our if our images or if our window is smaller and this thing gets moved over here we'll still know it basis off everything that everything that's off this so you'll understand a little more later if you don't understand it now all I'm doing is I'm getting a, a set point no matter what screen size there is so I know it so I know what to base it off of um, next thing we're gonna start breaking into the actual game library and what we're doing is the body on load as long as there isn't a problem with our library we're gonna call this function and I've never had that thing go off. I've never had a whatever that browser panic is. So you shouldn't have to worry about it. But all it's doing is saying, as soon as the page loads, call this function tonight. And I'll show you the function. And then we have our standard div tag logo. I have a panel area, which I've included, panel.php. I have my map area. On click, just, just remember this. If you click the element, and we may change this later. This, this may not be the best way of doing it. But for now, it's kind of a setup. But if you click... Um, the the this div the map area then it's going to run this function check element and then we have our right panel and I included right panel so if we look at our panel all I have here is selected unit and then I've created a div and called it a select building and if we go to our main function let's kind of skip across some of this stuff what I'm doing is is I've done in function select building and I don't want to get too far ahead but everything kind of blends together I'll, just real quick I just want to show you all I'm doing is I'm getting element of ID selected building that's that div and then dot enter HTML means whatever's the HTML built inside that tag I've made it create that create that image so what I've done is when you click it the dot the dot enter HTML creates that image there pretty simple and we'll go into a little more here in a minute um, and that's all there is to panel for right now the right panel and this also is going to change dynamically because we're going to make it, of course, whatever race you are, you're going to have different buildings. Can you build that building? Are you high enough tech level? But for now, let's just get the buildings in there. So what I've done is I've just, you know, put that little building image in there. And then I put the two building images in on click. So when you click on one of those images, um, then we will create the hat. We will actually send a... Um, Send the send a variable house, and we'll send the, and not really variable. We'll send the word house and the word tower to this select building function. So if we go to our main functions and we look at select building, you can see here I'm passing that text into this into this variable. This variable's catching it. So the now the building variable has whatever else, whatever you pass into it from this panel. So if I click the house, it's going to pass house. If I click the tower, it's going to pass tower. So if I click house tower that's whatever it's passing into that function and the function says if um, the building selected equals one so pretty much it's saying now we've selected a building and then this is where I was saying then you're going to look at the inner HTML it's going to create the image and then it's going to take that variable building so let's say we click on the house it's going to say house underscore three dot PNG and if you look at our images you will see under buildings I have one two three and then tower three I haven't built anything on that yet but that's all, so that's what it's doing is taking house that variable or tower that variable and then it's just adding underscore three dot PNG and that's how it's creating that image so all I'm doing is I'm passing that variable through there um, so that's basically all there is to the right panel that's what it's doing so now we need to look at the actual main function Here's our night function that on body load it runs. This, all this stuff here is game ver is the actual from the game library. It's saying just Linux compatible each equals true. Always put that in there. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create this house sprite. We haven't created a tower sprite because we're starting slow. So we're doing a variable and we're calling it house equals new sprite. And we got to set the image. So I did images building house one, which is that, which is that right there. And we're, we're sizing it 100 by 83. Um, set limits. Now this is where we can actually probably fix the issue I'm having. This actually sets the limits of the screen. But if you notice, I have offset map, which means it's the start of our map. Like I said, we, we pulled the, the offset of it. And then it's the offset map plus 
and it's supposed to be, you know, probably around 400, or actually it's 500 total, but for right now it's not working, so i got to figure out why it's not working, but it's not important right now. We'll get to that in a minute. And then I'm setting the Y limits. I just kind of set some limits real quick. I don't, I'll don't. i have to test to see where the limits are, but it's not going to hurt anything right now. Next thing I do is I set the frame of the house. Now, there's no animation in this house. There will be, but everything starts at zero. On It's kind of like an array. It starts at zero, one, two, three. So the first frame of this is, of course... Um, zero. So that's what that frame's going to be right there. Um, next, we want to switch switch it on. Just basically turns it on. We're going to set the Z. The Z is just what level it's on. I just put it at eight in case we want anything underneath there. Um, it's not really important, but that's where we're going to set it. And then we want to move it off screen because when when the when the when the page loads, we don't want to see that graphic. We don't want to see that graphic right there, so it sits it way over there. We may do this a little differently later because I don't know how this is going to react. Supposedly it works just fine. I've never had a, and I personally have never had a problem with doing this, but if somebody may, so we may have to change it, but for now, it's good enough. So that basically creates the graphic and sets it off screen and we're done. It's loaded, so therefore you when it, after your page loads, it will be a lot faster. Next thing we want to do is we want to hook our game loop. The game loop is like in any game engine or anything you've ever worked worked with. It's a it's a loop that continues to loop, and so you put in your actions. If a player fires a gun, um, it's it's going to be checking for keystrokes, checking for mouse functions. That's where the loop runs through. And if you see here, I've got our loop right here. We can even come in here and put main game loop, so everybody understands. And you could come in here and put an alert. Um, whatever and it'll just sit there and run that alert it'll do all kinds of things um, we don't want any scroll bars um, then next thing we need to do and it's kind of in a bad place but we want to ignite the mouse and turn it into a variable so that what I've done is just called it the mouse and ignited it then I have a, a start which pretty much starts the game library and then I want it to run the start right panel and technically I kinda of pulled everything out of the right panel so let's just remove that we don't need that anymore but you can actually call a function to start beginning so, um, the next thing we want to actually do, it, this pretty much ignites everything. The only thing I want to kind of show is how this, if we click the map area, check the check element fires off. All it does is function check element will run if building selected equals 1. So in other words, if you notice, if there's nothing in there, nothing happens. They haven't selected anything. You have to select the house and click it. I don't know what happens if I have a tower here. Huh, it still works, but... Um, Actually, it creates the... No, it's the same thing. We'll, we'll fix it here in a minute. I just didn't want to go too far because I know the video is going to run long. But anyway, it checks to make sure that you even have anything selected. Then it says house.move to. Now, of course, we're going to have to bring in a variable because what if you have the tower selected? All we're going to do is put building in here and then make this the building.move to. We're also going to create turn this into an array to where it arrays... In other words, instead of doing one for house, doing tower and this, it's going to be an array basically built with all the buildings in there. But um, So all it's doing is it's moving the house to wherever the mouse position X and Y is. So it takes it from negative 100, 100, 100, and puts it right there. So it's pretty actually pretty simple what we have so far. Um, it, you know, it looks pretty good out here so far for being what we're wanting to do, but it's, it's pretty simple code. The next, the next video we're going to work on... Um, getting this maybe this animation working and, and fixing this little deal right here and getting it getting it looking a little better and by the way if anybody wants to donate some start working on some graphics and donate graphics we'll throw it in here and everything